Jean-Sylvain Perrig, welcome on UBP TV. Divergence is the theme of the investment outlook. Can you explain why? Yes, sure. Um, we call divergence the spread between uh, economic growth, monetary policies, and rates between the US, Japan, and the EU. Currently, the economic growth in the US it is accelerating toward a 3% GDP growth, which is um, below levels we had before the crisis, but a good level given the current context. And at the same time, Japan and the EU will struggle to accelerate from current low level of GDP growth. So the spread is there as well. Therefore, even if central banks remain extremely accommodative, uh, the Fed has ended its quantitative easing program and at the same time, the Bank of Japan and the ECB are expanding theirs. That's why rates are higher in the US and that's why as well the spread between rates in the US and Japan in the EU is so wide currently. You state that the dollar is on a positive secular trend. How can that impact US equities? First on the dollar. Uh, it's true that uh, the dollar is on a secular phase of appreciation. And uh, the reason is that expected returns on US financial assets are higher than the rest of the world. Therefore, it's, it is attracting a lot of international flows to be invested in the US financial system. So these positive flows are pushing the value of the US dollar higher, and that is only the beginning. Uh, regarding the impact of a stronger dollar on the U.S. equity market, uh, there is no correlation. You can have a very strong U.S. dollar and very strong equity markets. It was the case in the period 95-2000. We had 50% appreciation on the dollar index. And at the same time, the S&P price index went up by 250%. And you have other occasions where a strong dollar is, uh, is coming with a weak equity markets. So uh, that's a strong dollar is not a problem for the US equity market performance. And the impact on earnings on a strong dollar, we can estimate that with 30-40% of earnings coming out of the US uh, for US corporations, uh, the impact of 10% appreciation of the dollar is uh, taking 1% of the earnings growth. So that impact is not material and it should be a headwind for U.S. equities. Jean-Sylvain, which sectors would you specifically recommend to invest in? First, we recommend to be strongly overweight in U.S. equities, especially in European portfolios. Then we, we, we have uh, strong convictions on two sectors, uh, healthcare and technology. The reasons are, uh, first, you have positive earnings revisions, and earnings growth is expected to be much higher than GDP nominal growth in the US. So uh, that's very interesting for that point. Then uh, you have a lot of innovation going on in these two sectors, so it's helping for uh, productivity. And then thirdly, valuation premiums of these two sectors relative to the market, the general market, are at or below historical levels. Therefore, we expect uh, some P expansion from current levels relative to the market. And are you still positive on high yield bonds? There was a debate recently about the valuation of high yield and high yield bonds. We think that um, high yield uh, is still a good value. It's true that recently a lot of borrowers came to the market uh, to borrow and uh, these borrowers were of lower quality than in the past. But on an aggregate basis, um, the current level of spreads are very interesting. Given the fact that we expect the economies to expand, even if in the case of Europe and Japan it's not by a lot, but it's a very positive scenario for uh, the high yield bond market. Uh, the implied default rates with the current level of spreads are much higher than what we expect. And therefore, you can have, at least in the US, but in Europe it's about the same, uh, a six and a half. Uh, running yield. So the current level of spreads more than 4% relative to treasuries is very interesting. 
in the current level of very low interest rates. So we still favor high yield bonds. Jean-Sylvain Perrig, thank you very much. Thank you.